Um, let's revisit the story then. Birmingham City Council insisting vital services would be protected as the authority declared itself effectively bankrupt. The largest local authority in Europe is to halt all spending other than services it must provide by law, such as social care, waste collections and protecting the vulnerable. The Labour-run council needs to settle a £760 million bill for equal pay claims. This is absolutely massive. Meantime, the Labour leader of Birmingham Council has been slammed for being on holiday as his authority goes bust. John Cotton, who was hand-picked, by the way, for the role by Sir Keir Starmer, is said to be in New York celebrating his 50th birthday. Nice work if you can get it. Let's speak to Councillor Alex Yip, Birmingham City Councillor for the Conservatives. Alex, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ian. A very good point. Well made. Ian's away on the holiday while I'm at work. A lot of residents are worried about the future. Who knows what's going to happen? But you raise a very important point around accountability. Yeah. Now, Councillor Cotton, first in the Cabinet in 2012, he was personally in charge of the city's HR for the last four years. And he now claims to know nothing about this whole £760 million liability going up by £40 million every month. He claims to have only realised a couple of months ago. I mean, it's extraordinary. I mean, just on the holiday point, by the way, did you know he was away on holiday? No. So that wasn't a... I mean, you might have thought, it, even if you are part of the shadow cabinet, that everyone in the council would be aware that the head honcho is on holiday. Isn't that something that, you know, you might there might be an email that goes around to all councillors, regardless of uh, political party? Mr. Mr Cotton... He's the head, he's on holiday. He must have seen this coming around the tracks, one would have thought, Alex. I mean, this, isn't, uh, this didn't come out of nowhere, this, uh, th th this um, 114 petition. It's very curious how this notice came out whilst he's away on holiday. And there's also been a deafening silence from his other cabinet colleagues. There's been very few Labour cabinet members who on the interviews, we're trying to get, everybody's trying to, to get hold of John. I don't know where he is. He isn't replying to his emails. I've certainly contacted him while I'm at work, while residents are worried about the future. He is nowhere to be seen. Should he not have... I mean, it's... I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think it's even party political, this. But given the, the, the seismic nature of this news, given that there was some notice, and one would assume that if you are the, the, the head of the council, that you would... Uh, you know, be be told beforehand, even if you are away, that this was going to be announced. The first thing you might do is jump on an aeroplane and come back. Yes, and seismic is absolutely the word. And let's not forget that in 2012, Birmingham settled an uh, equal paid claim to the tune of £1.2 billion. That was 10 years ago. And now because of their inadequacies, their inaction, their willful neglect, it has led to a similar situation now 10 years ago, and I believe John is personally held accountable and he is nowhere to be seen. I mean, in terms of some of the examples of wastage, look, I mean, the equal pay uh, claim is, uh, you know, regrettable, unfortunate, whatever you want to say. I mean, perhaps not uh, specifically of Mr Cotton's making, but there are other areas that I know you and the Conservatives and others have been, you know, pretty angry about, you know, b bus depots being moved and street signs being renamed and Lord, and that's just the stuff we're reading about. I'm sure there's a big yeah. old list you've got over there in the chamber about areas where money was spent and it simply shouldn't have been. Yes, absolutely. And you make a very powerful point around Labour financial mismanagement. I've got three very good examples. You mentioned the Commonwealth Games. So uh, there was an athlete's village built at the tune of £570 million. Pounds. Yeah. Didn't house a single athlete. We had the IT uh, fiasco with Oracle, where it's now five times over budget and three years delayed. I mean, these are incredible situations here sure. that we have in Birmingham because the money is here, it's just been wasted. Was, was the Commonwealth Games a waste of money? I think the Commonwealth Games was worth it for the city, but whilst everybody is saying that the government hasn't helped Birmingham and council cuts, etc., the money has been here. The government paid a huge amount of money to help with the Commonwealth Games. There was a huge cash injection, so it was equal to 9% of council tax revenue for one year in one sum to help council through this. It was a wonderful year for uh, the Commonwealth Games whilst it's in Birmingham. Looking back on it, we as, a, a, as an opposition thought it was probably money better spent elsewhere, building hospitals, helping for life services, protecting our reserves. £100 million of council reserves went to pay for, in effect, two weeks of games. Is it worth it? We didn't think so then, and looking back on it, I think it could be better used.
How long does the pain last for Birmingham? Very good question. There's a huge amount of uncertainty. We're looking at council taxes probably going up by 10%. You mentioned bin services as a protected service, but it will be reduced. I can see services being reduced, cut to the bone, and this will disproportionately affect the most vulnerable people in our society. And the implications go on for many, many years. Organisations that are trying to do good long-term preventative work, they'll be prevented to do that because they won't have the money. So the implications will go on for many years in. Alex Yip, thank you. Councillor over there at Birmingham City Council, Shadow Cabinet Member for Communities.